Hey guys, the COVID-19 pandemic is still so prevalent in today's world and this has caused a lot of students to not be able to come home to Malaysia. So today we'll be clocking in remotely with free students from Barcelona, Hathersage and Los Angeles. We'll be seeing how they've been coping in their respective countries. Let's go clock in. My name is Rose. I'm currently in Los Angeles and I study at the University of Southern California. My name is uh, Serene Selvin. I'm currently in Barcelona, Spain in the Institute for Advanced Architecture of Catalonia. My name is Zoe and I am studying in UE Bristol. What was the situation now like in uh, your country? Like how is America dealing with all this, you know, with the Trump administration? Oof. Um, Please, ooh. pray tell. So what I know, like in California, we have the stay-at-home order. California was one of the smarter and faster ones to lock down, but it's not a full lockdown like in Malaysia or anywhere else. In the US, I think there's a little bit more freedom. You can still go out, you can still jog, which is why I don't understand why people are so against what's happening and calling it like fascist. So you're controlling us mm. too much, you know. But compared to other places, there's a lot of freedom here. People still go interstate and I know in Malaysia like you couldn't Malay Kampo for a while. Yeah, what about you Sarin? I think similar to what's happening in Malaysia, it's been extended every two weeks and here we are like 50 something days later. Fortunately, Barcelona, well Spain in general, they are in a de-escalation phase. So they've got like four different phases and right now, Barcelona specifically is in phase zero still, while some regions in Spain have been moved into phase one. Phase zero is the, the normal stuff where we have time slots to go out of the house. So adults are allowed certain parts in the morning and certain parts in the night, senior citizens in certain parts of the day and then uh, families in certain hours of the day. Mm, okay, what about you Zoe? On Sunday, they basically announced that it's slightly relaxed. It's similar to Malaysia CMCO. So you can go out for more than an hour's exercise because previously our lockdown, we were allowed one hour exercise a day. Restaurants are still not opening, but more essential stores besides groceries are slowly starting to open up and then they're probably going to review it. So every two weeks, they kind of come up with an update. Actually, coming back to like being Malaysian, right? Do you guys get discriminated? with the whole beginning of COVID like because it all started in China, you know? Oh my god, I have a story. Let me go, tell go. you. It's so juicy. I mean, not juicy, but basically, I was in Vienna in February with my boyfriend. So we went for a pub crawl. My boyfriend was getting shot. So he ordered the shots and he asked me to go pick it up. I went to the bar and I was going to pick up my shot and then the button just smacked my head. And I was like, Shema? Like, not Shema. I was like, why? I was like, shocked. <laughs> and then I went to my boyfriend and then he went there to collect the shot for me and then he was like oh sorry my, my girlfriend reached over the bar like what, what happened and the bartender was just like she's Chinese corona and then my boyfriend came back to me and basically told me what he said so I was like oh hell no <laughs> I went to the bar I was like excuse me I'm Chinese but I'm Malaysian and I haven't been back to my country for two years and blah, 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 I have to explain the whole history of how I'm Malaysian and not like China Chinese and the fact that I'm Chinese does not mean that I have the virus he basically just said like, no, no, no. Then he poured like two shots and he's just like, three shots, three shots, go. And I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> and I just drank the shots and like, Apology and accepted. Like, and I was like, don't do that. <laughs> he was like, okay, okay. And then I was just like, whoa. Because I never experienced like straight up racism in UK. Because in Bristol, it's, the culture is very open, I guess, in Bristol. <laughs> then my story. It's a good That's reason. so unfortunate. You're obviously there to study abroad, but how has this entire situation sort of affected your studies? USC has done very well to transition to like this online Zoom university thing. But since I'm a film and TV production major, which requires a lot of practical work, yeah. most of my courses have been impacted like really badly to the point where next semester people are petitioning to stop the production course if it goes online. Because we can't make films. I had to do actually three short films this semester but we only did two and the last short film would be postponed to the next semester but we don't know if the next semester is gonna happen so we'll see oh no 
So does that mean that your duration there might be a bit longer than expected? Yeah, I'm worried about that actually because you know you only plan for two years and you have the finances for two years and if it goes beyond like it's gonna cost so much. Especially in a foreign country and the exchange rate is just so much higher. Yeah, it's like 4.5 now to USD. Actually, I'm in the same kind of position as Ross. Fortunately for me, my thesis is not based on making stuff. Anyway, I'm doing everything like through my computer but a lot of my course mates, they are really struggling to redirect their thesis and the worst part is all this is happening in our last two semesters of our course that's already three months worth of research there is no saying what's going to happen in two weeks they've been like asking the school like what's going to happen in terms of like all the fabrication work are we allowed to come back like what's going on and the school they're really trying their best to mitigate the situation and try to give politically correct answers <laughs> because they can't really say anything without the government's approval you know so it's like even if they say something in two weeks it could be completely different and then they'll have to reissue a statement mm, okay what about you zoe my course thankfully it is all online a lot of people at the university were very upset that they can't actually go ahead with their assignments fully and someone started a petition to do a no detriment which is basically whatever you get for your results during the lockdown will not be impacted if you get any lower you will either stay in the same grade as your term one or you do better that's all but actually why did you guys decide not to come home like what was your thought process time difference because I still had online classes and if I actually went home, I would have to wake up at 2 a.m. and do classes till like 7 a.m. And I'm still staying for summer classes because it's still going to be online. I stay here because, well, I had hopes that my graduation was still gonna happen and the plan was always for my family to fly here for graduation. I guess it was kind of pointless for me to go home. The point of going home would be to see family, friends and the food. But there's really no point in going back when two out of three of that I won't be able to get. I'm quite settled here. It's not like I have to pay rent. I just thought, yeah, why not just spend my time here. Going back home, you would have to be quarantined for two weeks. And I think that kind of put me off just the thought of like me spending two weeks apart from home it just didn't make sense to me the spanish government has taken all the restrictions necessary already so all i need to do here is just to abide by the laws and do my part one other big reason is that i was afraid that i would not be able to come back in and finish my degree because when trump started closing borders i like panicked i did ask my parents like so should i go or should i go or should i stay <laughs> you know but they were like, no, just stay there since you're almost done with your senior year, might as well. Yeah, because what if they don't allow you back in and you can't finish your studies and all those years are just gone, right? How have your families been coping, by the way, with you guys being overseas? Okay, just... <laughs> okay, okay, just... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, you Best know, part. life I mean... as, per as normal outside. Well, obviously being in the center of the pandemic has scared them a lot. I feel like we have a lot more communication now because of that sense of responsibility to let them know like I'm okay, my week has been like this, I went grocery shopping, you know, what the government rules are right now. How about you, Rose? My dad has been kind of worried that I would be influenced by like, I wouldn't say protesters, but you know, some people are more concerned about the economy shutting down here. So they want the restrictions to go away or and they don't care and they just like go out. So my dad was initially worried that I was starting to think like Americans, but I told him I'm going to govern myself, even though the government doesn't tell me that I should stay home, I will still stay home. As a Malaysian, you've had experience with like H1N1 and I'm like SARS. Are you guys getting any aid from the government or any educational aid from your universities that are helping you like get food or anything like that? I don't think my university has any schemes that are giving us free money or oh, at least not that I know of but uh, I was lucky enough because I was actually working part-time at this Vietnamese cafe slash restaurant before and my boss actually applied for this scheme called furlough so furlough is UK scheme for small businesses with like one to maybe 500 employees that you know they close down so now they need to kind of keep their small business still running and pay their employees. You can apply for the scheme from the government and they will pay you 80% of your wage. So USC has a lot of like emergency COVID-19 funds that they're giving throughout the whole school. But they would want to know 
what you're gonna spend on. So you have to list down like, oh, I lost my source of income, so I need to pay rent for this month or next month. So you have to be very specific with what you need it for. They're not just gonna give anyone. I don't really know how they process it, but yeah, there is that option though. But tuition fees are still no discount. 100% you need to pay. Which is quite crazy. Yes, it is. Especially at a private university. There's been this petition going around for USC students and lots of people, like 8,000 people have been signing it. It's to receive partial reimbursement for our spring semester that went online halfway because our education quality basically like dropped right after but they said that even though it's online it's a high quality education you're getting so no we're not gonna reimburse you but there are no utilities that you're using you're not using any of the libraries you're not using any of the resources right yeah what about the malaysian government has like the malaysian government helped you guys in any way or reached out to any of you oh yes, yes. so what? yeah so it was really sweet like um Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Malaysia sent out a statement like asking foreign students to register with the closest Malaysian embassy and I was like super nervous about like contacting them because I did not want to be deported back home <laughs> but I did it anyway because I mean we were kind of weighing out the whole situation and it would be ideal for the government to know that hey I'm here, hello. And um, I think a couple of weeks later, like I got a call from them and then they basically ask all my details and stuff where I'm staying, which part of Spain I'm in. And I think like a week later, I received this mysterious package. I'm like, Sanitizing. okay. Like, I, yeah, I did not know what was going on. I opened it and it was actually like N95 masks, which was so hard to find. And I mean, I was going back and forth like, who? just randomly sent me masks like what the hell is going on right now Whoa. <laughs> and i mean yeah so i was thinking and i was going over it i'm like well actually the malaysian embassy is like the only people who like know of my address and my phone number and everything like i wasn't expecting anything at all honestly and then they've like been calling to check up on me and like asking for more details and all that so i thought that was really sweet so yeah that was me what do you guys miss most about malaysia Good. What do we have all day? <laughs> um, I do, because it's the middle of the day for me, but y'all gotta go sleep. <laughs> it's 9am here, I've got, I've got the whole day too. <laughs> <laughs> nah, food. Guys, the food hey, banana in Malaysia. Leaf, oh. <gasps> I am Malaysia. going to start crying right now. Yeah, even yeah. Indian food. I want my yeah. fun me, man. My freaking chili fun me. Bakute, you know? <gasps> There's no Malaysian food here. I would die for freaking nasi lemak. Oh, teh tarik, in fact. Thank you so much for allowing us to clock in remotely with you and sharing your thoughts and your personal lives with us. Is there any last words that you would like to say to the people watching or even to your friends and family who are watching? It's not going to end anytime soon, even if these lockdown restrictions ease. I think we all should do our part as, you know, individuals in trying to mitigate this entire situation because there's only so much that the government can do. I think right now, the only thing that we should try to remember as much as possible is kindness. You know, like you beat yourself up because your plans are over, like the world is on pause, but you should really like take care of yourself better during this time and also try to take care of other people. Yeah, I think during this pandemic, it's really important to take care of your mental health and not just your physical health. And don't forget to be kind to other people who are working during this pandemic because they are risking their lives for your sake. And, you know, stay home, stay safe. <laughs> Also, Burger Lab, you're so delicious. Yes, Burger Lab. <laughs> I really miss my Burger Lab, Malaysia. Bye, Burger Lab. Quick, drop your orders now. Like, so they catch it. Give me the Elvis. Gem in with Elvis. I mean, please. I think one of the biggest takeaway that I got from just even speaking to them is that they are taking it day by day but the future is still very very uncertain like once they graduate, are they even able to graduate? When they graduate, will they have a job waiting for them? Can they stay in the country to earn a living or do they have to come back? And even if they come back, will they have a job, you know? But one thing that I can take away from their hearts right now is unity you know, being united as one front and as people, you know, people of the world. So that's all for today. If you like what you see so far, be sure that you're following us on all our social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Our handle is We Are Clocking In. This is Michelle, clocking out remotely. Bye!